Hello everyone. In the prior session, we looked at internal control. Also, we looked at the seven principles of internal control. In this session, we will focus specifically on internal control over cash receipts. This step, internal control over cash receipts, is a critical process designed to make sure the accurate and efficient handling of the most important asset, cash, especially cash inflow, cash inflow to the organization. The purpose of internal control over cash receipts is to safeguard an entity's cash, prevent errors, fraud, mis mismanagement, theft, so on and so forth. It will involve establishing policies and procedures to make sure all cash transactions, especially incoming cash transaction, are properly recorded and deposited and the asset is safe in the bank account on a timely fashion. Now, the importance of internal control in this area cannot be overstated. We cannot ignore cash. We cannot have lenient internal control over cash, especially cash receipts. We need that cash to operate. Why? Cash is highly liquid and cash is a vulnerable asset. It means you can steal a $20 and all $20 look the same, so you cannot trace it. Effective control over cash help minimize the risk of theft, embezzlement, and inaccuracies in the accounting record. Also, the control over cash receipts ensure that financial records are reliable and all cash is received, is correctly accounted for. That's important because it's going to affect our accounting record. And one more time, it's deposited in the bank in a timely fashion. In this session specifically, we will cover internal control procedures over two types of cash receipts. Over-the-counter cash receipts is where the company receives actual cash hand-to-hand, -hand, like a retailer, like a supermarket, or by mail. By mail means people mail you a check, not by mail. They don't mail you cash. So we'll see the internal control for those two type of cash receipts. Now, bear in mind, in the real world, most cash receipt na receipts now are done via a wire. A wire means electronic transfer, which is it will involve similar but different types of controls. If you can understand cash receipts over the counter, cash receipts by mail, practically the same concept, different steps. At the end of this recording, we'll work a multiple choice question. So let's go ahead and get, start get started by going over control over cash receipts, specifically over the counter. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let us start by discussing the main purpose. Why do we have internal control over cash receipts? This is to make sure that all cash received is properly recorded, that's important, but also deposited at the bank. So if the money is not at the bank, there's a risk of, of that money being lost, stolen, disappearing. So cash receipts for a company typically comes from two different places. What are those places? Either over the counter, it means someone pays you cash, and this transaction is less and less relevant, or by mail and what we say by mail no one mails a check they mail you i'm sorry no one mails you cash they mail you a check so you you don't mail cash okay I'm, i want to make sure i clarify this point we're going to discuss internal control procedures when a company receives cash over the counter and when the company receives cash in the mail which is a check over the counter cash receipts is when you have a person behind the counter accepting hand you're handing out the cash to them. So the transaction should be recorded on the cash register immediately. Why? So once you register, you record the transaction and customer should always receive a receipt. So a cash register should have a permanent 
locked in record of each transaction it means once you register once the register record the transaction you cannot delete it it, it shows that we made a sale and an advanced system this register will be connected to the AIS the accounting information system where the transaction is recorded now in a less advanced register you need to do what the register still securely record the transaction on a paper tape over the counter cash receipts transaction should be recorded on a cash register immediately after each sale and customers should always receive a receipt why because a receipt is a proof that the sale was rang up now why do we want to make sure that's the case the business is concerned the owner of the business management is concerned that the clerk the person that's receiving the money they misappropriate a fancy word for stealing or pocketing the money so the cash register should have a permanent logged in record of each transaction where it's that's it it's in you cannot delete this record and an advanced system the register this register here will be linked to an accounting information system and less advanced one you could still see what happened on a paper tape or electronic file that's locked inside the register now in some businesses what they do they encourage the customer not they encourage they put a sign if you receive no receipt your purchase is free now why do they do that and I often see it in Dunkin Donuts places drive through and the reason is they want the customer to act as a check on that clerk because if you don't receive a receipt you might you, you would say well this is a free item for me you go inside and ask for the free item and if the person refused they'll say we well, did not give me a receipt the item is free so what happens here is they encourage you as the customer to act as an internal control against that clerk so now the clerk is more motivated to do what to register all transaction and give you a receipt now segregation separation or segregation of duties is an important concept in internal control and it's very important when we are discussing receiving cash over the counter so we're going to look at what do we need to separate first is the clerk the clerk who handles cash should not have access to the records or should not be able to change the records why because the clerk can touch the cash if they can touch the cash and change the record they would steal with one hand and change the record with the other one so at the end of their shift the clerk will count the cash in the register record the amount and hands both over the cash and the record to the company's cashier the cashier has access to the cash but should not have access to the accounting record so they cannot change it or the register tape or the or the file itself now a supervisor a third employee could be a supervisor often a supervisor compares the record of the total register with the cash receipts reported by the cashier well then this record is used for a journal entry to record over the counter cash receipts so you have a person that's handling the cash cannot change the record all what they can do is they can count the cash and tell you this is how much we received and there's a record with the register the cashier who handles the cash they cannot change any record they just handle the cash they will make the deposit the cashier what would the cashier do with this money they will deposit this money and they will get a receipt from the bank deposit receipt which we'll talk about later how much they deposited now the third employee will do what will check on both how much cash did we receive did it make it to the bank compare that to the cash register everything should match and that will be the basis so this separation of duties means the clerk and the cashier both handles cash but they cannot change the record the supervisors handles the record but don't have the actual cash because the cashier takes the money directly to the bank now the third party which is the supervisor can take a look at the record for example I still remember in one place I worked because we had an online banking system the supervisor will check every day the deposits they would look they would go to the online account open the online account check how much deposit the cashier made the prior day compare the record how much we received in cash and kaboom you know we're, we're checking that everything matches so this structure ensure that any discrepancy or attempt at theft 
are detected quickly. Now, could theft happen? Of course, it could happen. If the clerk, the cashier, and the supervisor, they're all working together, it could happen. But what you're doing by doing this layer, separating the transaction into, into, into different individual, you are creating checks and balances. We need to talk about cash over and short because this could happen when you are handling cash, receiving cash, given back change. So in retail transaction, that's very possible for customers to be given too much cash or too little change. As a result, the cash and the cash register at the end of the work period may not match the recorded cash receipts. Well, the register should show something and you have a different amount of cash, either more or less. Hopefully more, not less, because if less, it means uh, you know, you either lost it or someone stole it. These discrepancies are tracked through an account called cash over and short or cash short and over. It doesn't matter how you want to call it cash, cash short and over. This account is included in the income statement. So it's an expense account or a revenue account dependent, depending whether you have more cash or less cash. If you have more cash, it's basically other revenue. If it's less cash, you have a shortage. It's an expense. Usually those amounts are usually small and in some places they could be large. I worked in a place, it's a government entity and they had a large amount of change in cash, cash overage. They had a lot of cash overage where the employees over the years, they would buy lunch every once in a while. The supervisor would use this surplus, in quote, surplus balance to do that. Let's take a look at recording cash overages. If the cash register shows that 550 should be in the cash register, what does that mean? It means when we rang up the total sales in the register, it shows we should have sales 550, but the actual count $560. There's an overage of $10. Where did that came from? Uh, I don't know, we gave a customer the wrong we shorted, we shorted the customer $10. We did not notice. They did not notice. We have extra $10. How do we journalize this entry? Cash is $560. Sales credit is, notice when I indent, it's a credit. Credit sales $550. And we have a cash over and short $10, which is in this situation other revenue. We have some other revenue of $10. Recording cash shortage Let's assume the cash register shows $625. So this should be the total sales, but the actual count is 621. This is the cash. There's a shortage of $4. What would be the journal entry? We debit cash. We debit now cash over and short, which is other expense. Other expense, which is a mistake. We are short $4 and sales is credited 625. Now, when we have it, cash over and short management should investigate what is happening because it could be a mistake it could be an error or it could be someone is committing uh, theft which is misappropriation of funds we need to take a look at it what's the impact on the financial statements now usually customers are more likely to notice and dispute being short changed rather than receiving too much cash generally speaking not where I worked with that government entity, but that's a different story. <laughs> Again, cash over and short often have a debit balance indicating an expense. This account is reported on the income statement under selling general administrative expenses. This account should be minimal. How would you reduce it? Make sure you have a good accounting information system. Train the clerk. Um, catch the mistakes early and make sure to know where the mistakes are coming from. So since this amount usually involved small amount of money, they're often included under miscellaneous expenses or miscellaneous revenue, depending on whether the balance is a debit or a credit. So this is how we handle cash over the counter. It means actual cash received by a clerk from the customers. Now, another, another way to receive cash is by mail. And again, you don't mail cash. What we meant by mail is you receive a check. So managing cash received by mail also requires stringent internal control to prevent theft and ensure accurate recording. Although it's a check, well, if you can get your hand on the check, you might be able to manipulate this information. So that's why we want to make sure the checks also make it to the bank. This process involves several steps and multiple people to minimize the risk of errors and fraud. I'll tell you a story. I used to work in a place where my job was to open the mail and, and 
perform the first step. I did not open the, the mail by myself. Matter of fact, I work for a company called City Financial. City Financial. And part of City Financial philosophy is they is they pride themselves on serving their local market. And City Financial gave out loan, personal loan, home mortgage loan to people in the community. And part of being local, you can mail your payment to the office. So part of our job as we were working in this office is to open the mail. Now, the first thing is you don't let one employee open the mail. Two employees are assigned to open the mail. And when I first started to work there and when the manager says, well, you guys too will be opening the mail today. For one thing, I said, well, that's a waste of time. Why, why do you need two people to open the mail? Well, well, you need two people because you want to make sure there's a system of checks and balances. And guess what? The following day, I thought I'm opening the mail. Then not, that's not what happened. They rotated me. They brought another individual with the other person. And the third day, they brought me with a, with another person. They, they keep rotating so people don't get friendly. This dual control ensures that no single person has a complete control over the process, reducing the risk of theft. Now, if I and the other person decided to steal together, then this internal control is defeated. So that's why you want more than one person. And the other thing that we did immediately was stamp the check for deposit only. So as soon as we open the mail, we have you know stamped and we stamp the check immediately for deposit only. And this is called restrictive endorsement. We'll endorse stamped or the technical word is endorse the check, endorse it. It's a restrictive endorsement this way, even if it was lost, stolen, or anything, no one can do anything with it because it's for deposit only. That's the first step. What do we do next? As the mail is open, the employees prepare a list and try plake it of all the money received. It means three copies. This list include each sender's name, the amount that we received, and explanation why the money is sent, usually for their account number. This list, this list, this list is sent. The first copy to the list is sent to the cashier, the person that's going to deposit the money. The second copy of the list is sent to the record keeper, accountant. And obviously the third copy is retained by the people that open the mail because they need the record of that. So we will send them three copies of this, of this list. One to the cashier, one to the record keeper, and we keep one for us. Now, the benefits of this is checks and balances. We know what we sent. We have a record of it. Everyone is on the same page looking over each other. Step three, cash handling. The cashier will deposit that money in the bank. That's their job. The record keeper, the accountant, records the amount received in the accounting record. So notice the cashier will have the money and that money goes to the bank. The accountant will never see it. The accountant would only do a journal entry. Now, again, what's going to happen, someone's going to look at the journal entry, look at the bank, and look at how much cash we received, a third party, maybe a supervisor, and reconcile everything. So the record keeper who has maintained the financial record never received the check. So this is the record keeper. They don't receive the check. All what they received is a list of all the individuals with their account numbers and how much they paid. The separation of duties help prevent theft as the record keeper cannot misappropriate the funds even if they they, can, they don't have access to the funds. We didn't show them the funds because they can change the record. If the cashier does not deposit all the cash, let's assume the cashier don't deposit all the cash, the discrepancy will be evident when the bank record does not match the record keeper's record. Because let's assume we gave the cashier $10,000 and the cashier took to the bank $9,500. The record keeper is expected $9,500 the people that opened the mail are saying we received 9,500. I'm sorry, we received, the record keeper is expected to, to record 10,000. The people that opened the mail said we received $10,000 worth of checks. And usually what we do, we'll take a picture of the checks too, have a record of the check themselves. So this is again a way of doing what? Taking a transaction from receiving the cash to depositing the cash to recording the cash using different individuals, separation of duties, separation or segregation or separation of duties. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. At ABC Company, the same employee both records cash receipts so they can... Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. At ABC Company, the same employee both records the cash and deposit the cash. 
into the bank account which internal control is being violated here so if they can record the cash that's the accounting record they can have access to the record and they have access to the cash what's the violation here well are these position in conflict should 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 the same person be able to do both and the answer is no people that can record the cash receipts they can record the amount should not be able to deposit the money why and what's worse if they if they receive the money themselves in the first place we're going to assume here that they do but even if they do if they don't have an access to the cash and access to the record you could manipulate the record to your own advantage so that should not be allowed and the violation here is separation of duties or segregation of duties and that will be answer D now you want to know the other ones because you could have examples about the other ones what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures and look at additional MCQs additional resources that's gonna help you that's gonna help you whether you are an accounting student a CPA candidate CMA candidate or just taking these courses for professional advancement invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe